and welcome to 2020. Who would have thought we'd be blooming writing 2020 on our blooming notepads already? Goodness gracious, I hope you had a happy Christmas and a fruitful new year. Whew, tell you what, I'm lucky I made it through, but here I am. On to a new season. So it's going to be an exciting new year here in the Bush Bee Company. We're on the expansion. Oh, I've got to show you this new bit of excitement over here. Stay there. <laughs> so you might have noticed us extracting honey in our blooming mozzie proof tent down at the beach. Well, we're not at the beach really. So I'm updating. Oh, heck, well, hopefully I'm updating. <laughs> You're going to get to see how we do the updating. We're going to get ourselves in here into a sealed container. Well, it's not really a container. It's a blooming old food container actually so it's not just made of metal it's already insulated and some bloke sent me this really cool layout for a blooming extraction plant but i might have to save up a little for that because that's like you know looking pretty serious so anyway you and i are on this journey to become professional beekeepers so if you're happy in your backyard that's cool if you want to get it up a gear with me come along and see how we get on Oh, and if you're wondering what my little shelter logic thing is, that's my heating pot. Mind you, it was a little bit heady the other day. It was 48 degrees and we got a little bit melted. Brrr, golly gosh. Well, I was a bit melted. <laughs> Blum and heck. 48 degrees Celsius in the shade is a little bit crazy. I don't know what it was in the sun, but I had to sit under the air conditioner for a bit. I think I got myself some heat stroke. Anyway, I'm looking forward to a fantastic new 2020. We've got the truck to get organised, which has all been a bit of a blooming adventure. So we've got some new flavours coming your way. We've had to move a little bit away from the Mallee because it's jolly so dry and hot here. So we're going to be having some blue gum honey, some red gum honey, and oh, obviously some Mallee honey when it rains here again. So what else have we got going on, John? You would be surprised the wife's been busy in the kitchen making products with me beeswax. Tell you what, she's a bit demanding too trying to keep up. I've got a few boxes around here that need scraping, but shh, don't tell her because I'm not sure that I've got time to put that together just yet. Whew. Anyway, I reckon 2020 is going to be a big year for us here at the Bush Bee Company. So come along for the ride and thanks to all you supporters and subscribers and what is it called? Uh, Patreon and donating and whatever all that stuff it's all blooming awesome and i don't know because i'm a terrible marketer with all that stuff all i know is i love working with me lad and he likes bringing this show to you so let's all have some fun together in 2020 well there comes a time in every product's life that has an end date even a bee box sometimes has an ending but here at the bush bee company the ending is really just the beginning because this box is going to end up in something really groovy you never know, I've managed to create myself another job. The wife caught me, caught me out here and she says, you're not allowed to burn that red pine. That's beautiful, no one gets red pine anymore. I haven't seen that for a blooming egg since I was a little girl. And I'm guessing I'm not supposed to tell you her age, but when she was a little girl, that's a little bit of a time ago. After 50 years of trying to hold it together, pulling it apart is not as easy as you think. <laughs> but these bee boxes are going to get a second life. Be like me, part two of existence. Hmm, but that's actually a solid end as well. Now that's the interesting thing about these old boxes, this is why I've got this job, is because that's actually a one whole piece of timber. Because you buy the new bee boxes and they've got little joins and stuff. Well, I've got, I've got a few around here even that have been fixed and have still got a join. But the ones that have survived long enough, they're actually a whole piece. Oh, I thought, well, that looks pretty cool. So I cleaned one up to show the wife and said, this is really lovely red pine. And of course, she said, well, that'll make a lovely Christmas present for me sisters. Anyway, we gave the sisters some for Christmas and they were so well received that we thought, well, perhaps we better make some for the wider audience. Can you guess what we're actually making out of this bit of old red pine? So there's actually two products that have been developed so far here at the Bush Bee Company for this red pine. 
when they're in really good condition, they become cutting boards. So, but if they're a little bit sort of, you know, what's that word when they used to, distressed. When they're a little bit distressed and they've got a little bit too many hive moths in there, wax moths, made holes and all the rest of it, then they actually turn into really cool cheese platters because one side's nice and beautiful and smooth. And of course, so you can put your cheese platter on there, you know, and present it between everybody. Hell, you might even get some Bush Bee Man honeycomb on top of your cheese, on top of the Bush Bee Man cheese platter. Cool, I'm getting a bit commercial there, aren't I? But anyway, it doesn't matter. I didn't want to waste this wood, but now I'm kind of wishing maybe I should have. <laughs> that a little wriggle. I'll try not to wreck it, because it's nailed in both directions is the trouble. <laughs> oh, come on, be nice to me while I'm being closed up. <laughs> See, they'd make, some of these would make cool little boards too, little end, little cheap ones. I don't know, wouldn't they? Perhaps, do you think? No? Yes, no comment from the cameraman. Anyway, I'll, I'm, I'm digressing yet again. Righty-o! Now, this is the moment when you realise that something that you bought five years ago at a garage sale could come in very handy. So, it's been hidden in the back of my shed since then because I come home from the garage sale with that in the box and my lovely wife went, what are you doing with that? And I said, well, I don't know, but it'll come in handy. And here we are, in handy. with that. I think that looks good. <laughs> now I can't guarantee that you're actually going to get one of these cutting boards but one of the other main reasons that I was doing this is because the wife made this really cool wood treatment which is kind of how I got started because she made this stuff and I said oh I've got an old red pine box maybe we could have the before and after shop for the Bloomin Street stall. You know how those thoughts just get you in trouble blokes but anyway <laughs> we'll go and sand the corners off of this and show you what I'm talking about. I was just having a thought, which is a scary concept. You know, if you were in, if you were in a corporation like, you know, Lego or somebody like that, they have brainstorming meetings with people sitting around the table, throwing in ideas about whether they're going to make Lego pirate ships or whatever. I'm in my own kitchen having a brainstorming meeting with my wife because she made this wicked ass cutting board treatment conditioner stuff. And I thought, well, I have some old wood from a bee box. That could do with some conditioning. And so here we are, brainstorming on the kitchen table. So never you mind how these things come about. We'll just show you how cool this is. So you can see, we've cleaned up our board. Bit of sandpaper around the edges. I haven't got the handles organised yet. That's in, that's in the brainstorming department as to whether it's going to be a cheese board or a cutting board. So maybe you could inbox us and decide whether you want handles on your cheese board or not. You obviously don't want handles on your bloomin' cutting board or you blunt your knife on them. Anyway, let's rub some stuff on here and show you how clever it is. Of course, due to the constraints of filming, we've just gone for a rummage through the lovely wife's tea towel drawer. Found this one, it doesn't look like it's been used too much, so hope it wasn't a Christmas present, otherwise that could be in trouble. She's not here to tell me, but if, I, if this is the last episode I ever make, you realise this was a bloomin' precious tea towel from her nana. But anyway, I'm going to show you how cool this works. So it's like a good massage for a bit of dry wood, actually. So you just want to start in the corner and you just bring your bit of old red pine back to life. Look at, look at that. Oh, tell you what. Not that I can take credit, but I'm, well, I reckon it's pretty blooming cheeky, really. It's pretty bloody good. You want to rub it in nice so it gets worked into the grain. Of course, the idea, of course, this is a food product, so you don't necessarily want to be varnishing your jolly cheese boards or your cutting boards, do you? But you want them to look cool. So that's the whole purpose of the exercise. If you've ever bought a varnished cutting board, you're probably not going to be happy with yourself. I just work that off a bit. I work this in a bit more, but for the sake of the cameraman, <laughs> we'll just give you the difference of how cool it looks. Have a look at that for a bit of difference. Oh, I reckon this blooming cutting board might see out another 50 years in its new life. Yeah, 
cool is that? You can't get timber like that anymore. Well, maybe you can. Obviously, you can get timber like that because it was some, hidden in somebody's shed somewhere. And that's at the point now where we'll just let it sit for a little while. Being that this piece of old wood is blooming older than me, I think. Now that's saying something, boys and girls, isn't it? <laughs> Golly gosh. I'm going to let it just laze around here. I normally let it sit around for a day or two so this can soak in and then I'll rub it again. But if you've got a cutting board, obviously, that you've been using and you want to freshen it up, you won't need to let it sit around. You can just rub it straight on and then give it a bit of a rinse off and then woo back to cutting up your carrots or slicing up your potato chips or... Hell, if you're really lucky, you might be having a scotch fillet and you can cut that up. Now, no guarantees that there's going to be a cutting board or a cheese board out of my bee boxes for sale. But the wife, the wife guarantees me that if you happen to have a piece of wood that you'd like to condition, she's going to have this up on the website. So toodle over there and give that a look. Cool. So here we are. 2020. Here we come. Look out. The bush bee man's going to have some fun. You can come along for the ride and check out all the cool things we're going to get done. The cool things I've got planned to get done, I don't know. Last year I started off and next thing you knew it was Christmas. So hopefully I can get a few things done before the end of January. Otherwise, you know, heck, who would know? It'll be bloody in the middle of the year and bloke will be trying to do his taxes and I don't know. And next thing it'll be 2021, won't it?